My guest at this time is former U.S. Attorney General Edwin Meese. In addition to leading the Justice Department during the second term of Ronald Reagan, he also served as a counselor to the president all the way back to Reagan's first run for governor of California in 1966. Mr. Meese joins me today to discuss the passing of President George H.W. Bush with a special focus on Bush joining the Reagan ticket in 1980 and serving eight eventful years as vice president before winning the White House in his own right in 1988. And Mr. Meese, it's always a great honor to have you with us, sir. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. It's good to be with you and your listeners. Well, the 1980 Republican primary was anything but pleasant. It was a very intense battle between Reagan and Bush and some of the other candidates. Uh, That's back when George Bush called Reagan's economic plan voodoo economics. They had a pretty famous dust up at a at a debate event in New Hampshire. Uh, Ultimately, of course, Reagan won the nomination. But after efforts to put Gerald Ford on the ticket with Reagan fell through, uh, eventually the campaign turned to Bush. What was your feeling at that time? of putting those two together after them being adversaries for so long? Well, uh, I think one of the things was, uh, by the way, the uh, the Ford idea was an idea some people had. Uh, it never really, in my opinion, was going to go anyplace. Uh, and Ronald Reagan felt, that because so many people thought it was a great idea, uh, particularly party leaders, uh, that we had to at least take a look at it, which we did, uh, but decided that it wouldn't work. Uh, and uh, that was mutually agreed upon by uh, then President Ford and and uh, Ronald Reagan. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, the the reason then the question was uh, who would be a benefit both to be on the ticket and ultimately be a vice president. And despite the fact that there were differences, uh, the voodoo economics, for example, uh, I later explained to people that uh, as far as uh, that was concerned, that in Detroit at the convention. Uh, 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 Mr. Bush had an exorcism, uh, and, 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 uh, uh, but uh, basically, uh, I think we, President Reagan, uh, Governor Reagan at the time, and the rest of us who were uh, leading the campaign, uh, felt that uh, overall George Bush, with his background and experience, and and with the fact that he was overall a, a, den- a, a gentleman, even though there had been uh, you know a couple of instances, but. There was never uh, bad faith or there was never uh, mean-spirited uh, attacks, um, differences on opinion uh, and opinion, uh, so uh, yes, uh, but that he was basically uh, uh, certainly well-qualified, number one, and number two uh, was really a, a gentleman and a person that uh, President Reagan, as president, could get along with and work well with. And uh, but But, of course, before that, before the the president uh, asked him to serve and announced him as his requ- uh, requested vice presidential candidate, uh, he made it was made clear uh, by uh, George Bush that he would uh, that he was willing and and able to support Ronald Reagan in all of his policies and and positions that he had taken during the campaign. So that that was the key element. Would he be a loyal uh, vice president? And of course he was. No president ever had a better vice president, a more loyal vice president, more hardworking vice president uh, than George Bush. And we're definitely going to get into that in, in, in just a moment. You were part of the, the famed Troika uh, after Reagan and Bush uh, easily defeated President Carter and Vice President Mondale in 1980. Uh, Jim Baker was chief of staff. He was uh, obviously from the Bush campaign, whereas you and Mike Deaver were from, from the Reagan team. Uh, at that point, uh, you just mentioned Bush's loyalty. Uh, was, was there ever any friction with trying to get some of Bush's ideas that were uh, originally contrary to Reagan into the agenda, or was Jim Baker and the other folks who came in from the Bush team all on board with, with Team Reagan from day one? Oh, I think there's no question that they uh, they were with the Ronald Reagan from day one. Uh, sometimes there are differences of opinion on how to do, accomplish something, but in terms of the goals, in terms of the basic principles, uh, they were uh, a part of uh, the Reagan team, no question about that. Uh, Jim Baker uh, particularly, uh, I think, uh, was a very good and experienced leader in Washington, which was a very valuable asset to us uh, since uh, uh, several of the rest of us had uh, been from California and hadn't had that Washington experience. But uh, I think there's no question that, that there was uh, great support for Ronald Reagan and his ideas. 
one of the first times that Vice President Bush was put into the spotlight came in March of 1981 when President Reagan was shot. Secretary of State Haig famously declared himself in charge while Bush made his way back to Washington. I think he had been in Texas or on his way there anyway. Uh, Bush, uh, of course, took a much lower key approach uh, once he was back in Washington and Reagan was recovering. What comes to mind about how Bush handled that moment? Well, he handled it excellently. Uh, just to give you one example, uh, he was on his way back from uh, from Texas, as you say, uh, and uh, the, the uh, plan was that uh, he would land at, at Andrews Air Force Base, and uh, somebody suggested that he then take the helicopter there and uh, right into the White House and land where the president normally would land. Uh, and he said, no, uh, have them land at my uh, official residence up at the Naval Observatory, and I'll come in uh, by car. He wanted to be sure that nobody thought he was usurping or trying to take over the position of the president. Uh, even th- That's just a small idea or a small example of how he was very careful not to do in any way uh, try to go beyond what his responsibilities were, uh, and uh, particularly not to uh, overshadow uh, the president while he was in the hospital, that sort of thing. He was always very respectful for the president, even to the point in cabinet meetings, for example, if he had uh, a a different opinion than some of the cabinet members, uh, he didn't try to to exert uh, rank or pull rank or exert his uh, his influence. If he had something important to say, he'd say it privately to the president when they had lunch, uh, as they did every week. We're talking with former U.S. Attorney General Ed Meese, also a counsel to President Reagan in the first uh, Reagan-Bush term. And uh, you mentioned a moment ago, sir, that there's there's never been a, a better or more loyal uh, vice president. You've talked about that in, in some ways. Uh, talk about the areas you believe that Bush was uh, the greatest asset to this administration. Well, uh, he would take on uh, one of the things he did, of course, was uh, he represented the president a number of times uh uh, usually it came uh, about with a, when someone, a, a leader of another country, had died. Uh, his staff had a, had a motto. They said, you die, we fly. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, uh, but, but it was more than that. It was the fact that he was a very, had very sound judgment. Uh, his uh, discussion with the president, particularly his private discussions, he was able to uh, talk uh, to the president very frankly uh, and present his ideas uh, well. But uh, also, and as I say, he did it in private, so it didn't look like he was trying to step on the toes of the other members of the cabinet. Uh, But beyond that, uh, one of the very important things he did was uh, the drug problem, particularly the importation of drugs in the Miami uh, and uh, Florida area by sea, uh, as well as uh, others, other ways uh, across the border uh, in the uh, southwest. Uh, And... uh, he, uh, the president asked him to take on the responsibilities of organizing the, uh, the initial work to coordinate uh, the activities of the various agencies of government, particularly to bring the Coast Guard into it, uh, to work with the DEA and so on. And uh, he handled that responsibility. He was the chairman of the Regulatory Reform Task Force. So there were a number of tasks during the course of, of the eight years that he took on uh, all was very well, but also in a way that was, as you point out, somewhat low-key, so that it didn't look like he was trying to uh, step on the on the president's lines. Let's talk about foreign policy briefly. Uh, I think it's safe to say that at least in 1980, uh, President Reagan, or then former Governor Reagan, had a much more um, different idea uh, about winning the Cold War as opposed to managing the Cold War than perhaps uh, Mr. Bush did at that time. Uh, in what ways do you think Bush influenced Reagan, and in which ways do you think Reagan influenced Bush, particularly as Bush ended up managing the the end of the Cold War and the dissolution of the Soviet Union? Well, I don't I don't think that there was that much difference. I don't remember that much difference in the campaign uh, that uh, then uh, that uh, George Bush at that time uh, was on a different. Uh, wavelength than than Ronald Reagan, uh, but he certainly, I think, was enthusiastic in following the president's lead uh, while he was in office, uh, while he was vice president, and uh, I think he also, I think he learned a lot from Ronald Reagan, in and that that, that uh, motivated him in the way in which he handled the uh, ultimate disposition of the Soviet Union as it was collapsing in 1989, 1990, 1991. Uh, during that period of time. You remember, it was Ronald Reagan uh, who said, uh, uh, when asked uh, about the evil empire in uh, 1988, in that period of time when 
uh, he had just finished a, a uh, agreement with uh, Gorbachev to remove a whole uh, class of nuclear weapons out of Europe uh, uh, about the evil empire. And uh, was, it, was it still an evil empire? And Ronald Reagan said, well, uh, this is a different era. In other words, we're looking towards an era of more cooperation, as was indicated by the treaty. So I think, uh, I think that uh, what George Bush did in the way in which he handled it uh, was uh, very similar to what Ronald Reagan would have done if he'd been in the same position. Uh, his final address from the White House, President Reagan, uh, offered this uh, now quite famous line about uh, what was accomplished over the previous eight years. My friends, we did it. We weren't just marking time. We made a difference. We made the city stronger. We made the city freer. And we left her in good hands. All in all, not bad. Not bad at all. It's very rare for a two-term president to hand over the reins to uh, another member of his own party, much less his own vice president. Um, talk about how their relationship blossomed, not only on a, on a, a professional level, but on, on a personal level, how their, their personal friendship grew over those eight years. Well, I think that, uh, first of all, uh, they're both uh, people, uh, men of goodwill, uh, men of generous towards others, and uh, of uh, the kind of people you would like to associate with. And I think, that for, as a result, they, they worked very well together. They, uh, as I say, they had lunch together every week, uh, pri- just privately, the two of them, so that they could talk things over uh, privately. Uh, they, uh, 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 George Bush never said a bad word about Ronald Reagan, nor the, did that uh, Ronald Reagan say anything bad about George Bush, because they really did get along, and they did work together, uh, rather than uh, as two separate political leaders. Uh, they really worked as a team. And so I think all of these things, the personal friendship, uh, the working relationship, all of these things really matched and uh, were tremendously successful as an example of how two people uh, of uh, with uh, some different ideas, uh, many of the same ideas, uh, could work together successfully. And you could see the, um, the, the power of that relationship when, when President Reagan passed away. Perhaps the most emotional moment of that funeral was the eulogy delivered uh, by President Bush. Uh, a lot of people believe that. I'm sure you thought that way as too. At least it was a very emotional moment nonetheless. Yes, it was, and I think it was a, a very appropriate and very uh, heartwarming tribute uh, that the vice president uh, or the president then uh, paid to Ronald Reagan. And lastly, you've probably already said it in, in a variety of answers, but uh, to put it in a nutshell, how will you remember President Bush? I'll remember him as a very kind and a very uh, warm-hearted gentleman uh, of uh, impeccable uh, uh, motives and uh, impeccable will and a person that I was proud to call a friend. Former U.S. Attorney General Edwin Meese served as a counselor to President Reagan and in a variety of positions for Governor Ronald Reagan. He is now affiliated with the Heritage Foundation here in Washington. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for Radio America.